not for an adult audience. For an adult audience. Bloodline may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Loveline. 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 With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everyone. It's Loveline. Dude. I'm Adam. <laughs> I'm looking at these uh, meters things. Yeah. You know, the things that uh, when Go you yell, down. your yeah. voice grows up. And I'm just looking at it. Watch. I'll get it in the right. Ho! Oh, Ho, look at that. <laughs> That's radio, baby. <laughs> it's Loveline. No. Nay, it's the best of love line. Oh, thank God. Um, Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, Dixon Medicine Specialist. And here's, here's why everyone's a winner on, on uh, Best Of. Because we're not there. Well, we're a winner because we're at home. Yeah, we're doing something. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm probably home. I'm drunk instead of just buzzed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I am when I'm in here. Yeah. But here's why everyone's a winner. We're winners because we're at home. You're winners because... You haven't heard half these shows, and even if you did, you were stoned, and it was a year ago. And as opposed to No Guest or one of the neighbors from the Parker's reunion show, you get big names like Jeff Probst from Survivor. Uh, Jeff Probst in studio tonight. Yeah. Best gig on television. Next to this one. Next to this one. (laughs) (laughs) This one's not on TV. But, uh, yeah, this is a great gig. Oh, here's Jenny. She has a kid with a 40-year-old guy engaged Ooh. to another girl. Uh. He's engaged to another girl? Jenny? Yes. You're 28? I'm 28. What's up? Um, I <clears throat> had a child two years ago. Um, we were kind of seeing each other, and he didn't mm-hmm. really make an effort to make it known that he likes me. So I kind of like went about my business. Well, wait a minute. It, uh, that, uh, already I'm lost. You had a child two years ago? Yes. <clears throat> with him? With, with this guy? With him, not knowing that it was his. Uh, All right. Uh, pardon our Who's did you think it was? Um, this other guy that I was... The beginning Pumping. of March, yes. I was seeing somebody, <clears throat> All right. and I was trying to break it off with him. All right. And the end of March, I seen this other guy. Okay. All right. So, So now what? Well, my question is, um, now he knows that he's the father. How did you find mm-hmm. out he's the father? We went for a DNA test. Okay. Wow. All right. Um, he's coming over to see uh, his son next week. Um, my question is, do I let him know how I feel? Um, we how do you talk- feel? I like him, um, <clears throat> but I don't want uh, a single... Um, Hold on a second. Is it Quaalude night? Everyone we've spoken to tonight is just uh, bad calls, bad lines. (laughs) Just just people people with a serious, like, three Mississippi in between every goddamn syllable. I told you not to take any calls. He did did say that. Uh, uh, Oh, oh. Uh, 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 you, uh, you think you can tell me what to do, Drew? I'm just saying, don't take any calls. See, you, you don't think I'm the captain of this ship? Yeah, I'm All just right. saying. I, you know, I predicted that one. All right. And, you know, well, you, there you go. You, now you, you got. Now you got another call. You got another call. You want to keep going? Right. You want a fourth call, Jenny? Yes. All right. Let's pace it up, baby. Let's go. Let's break it down. It's only a two hour show. You got a kid. Your kid's how old? He's two. Two. And the guy's coming over. He's forty. Right. And you guys broke up in the first place because of why? Um, well, he didn't make it known <laughs> that he was interested in me, so I didn't. L- look, you didn't have a relationship. You just slept together. Right. You just slept together. Okay. Right. And well, is he single now? He's engaged. <clears throat> and he has no idea he has a kid with you? He knows. He knows. He knows. All right. He's he, now what's he Yeah, they had a DNA interested. test. He's going to come over and, you know, kick the okay. kid's tires. Come on, tires. Drew. Catch up. Let's go, buddy. You're right. You're Let's right. focus. And so here's the thing. He's engaged. So I don't know what you letting him know how you feel is going to do when he's engaged to another woman. What's he coming over for? To see his son. Oh. Oh. Um, But we met um, last month, and he told me that he really loves kids, and he really didn't want to have a child this way, and he's confused, and he doesn't know what to do, and he really liked me. Well, uh, he he really liked you as a friend. I mean, and he's engaged. Right. Look, all right. So, so Jenny, work. yes. Here's the deal. You're feeling lonely and vulnerable, and all the above. 
this guy's engaged to another woman. He's confused. He's caught off guard. He doesn't even know he has a kid. He's going to come over there and say hi to the kid. Right. Uh, this is kind of between him and the kid, not really him and you. I'm you guys were, sure. were oh, one-night stand. God. I'm not even sure uh, he should really have. I mean, unless this guy's going to be in his life big time. Mm, to have a part-time point. father is going to be extremely destructive to this kid. Well, well how about some money? Yeah, he has a financial responsibility, but it might be better to sort of create some sort of mm, fantasy about who his dad was. Oh, are you do, are yeah. you doing this for the kid, or are you hoping that she's you doing can get him herself. over there? Yeah, of course, yeah, that's what she's yeah. doing. I'm doing this for the kid, too. No, yeah. please. And when she kid, says a kid, she means herself. Like, you right. know, when I say, hey, the, the kid really had a great radio show tonight. Am I right, brother? <laughs> the kid hot. Kid's hot, huh? Am I right? The, that's what they mean when I say the kid. Yeah. Yeah, Jenny, uh, you need, here's what you need to do. You need to make sure you get money from this guy. Right. And uh, then I think you need to let him get engaged and get married and you to find another man and create a stable home for the kid, who's me. Which is unlikely. Oh, boy. What's going on? What, what else is going on? Are you just confused and depressed? Um, I'm kind of... All right. I don't got enough time. Here's what... I gave her the speech about picking up the pace. Yeah. Here's uh, what she needs to do. Or, uh, I don't know. It does, doesn't seem like Jenny's going to be the world's greatest mom. Oh, no. I'm oh, worried no. about the kid. I'm very and, worried. Uh, okay, so here are the priorities. No more kids. And see if you can get in a stable, realistic relationship with an available oh. guy who can there then be there for the kid. Not yes, the guys you're obsessing about. Just somebody you can create a stable, <laughs> boring life with. Simple That's life. right. Ride it out, and uh, hopefully you'll be taken early. Here, I got one for you. What? Speaking to the kid, name this band. The kid is hot oh, tonight. Oh, that'd be a little lover oh. boy. <laughs> Come right on. on. I've done that song karaoke in karaoke form like 700 times. Okay. Uh-huh. I did that song. so uh, I'm such a bad karaoke sing- singer that uh, we used to have big karaoke parties over at Kimmel's house, and I would do The Kid is Hot Tonight or Hell is for Children by Pat Benatar, mm-hmm. nice. which is really not a dry eye in the house. <laughs> and, and one night... Uh, you know, it would be one of these things where, you know, we'd be eating dinner, having a few drinks, send the kids to uh, bed about uh, 10 o'clock, and then the karaoke would start up in the middle of Hell is for Children. Uh, Jimmy's daughter, Katie, was probably about nine at the time, came down the stairs crying. Make yeah. him stop, Daddy! Make him stop! It's like tearing. You know, kids get, like, frustrated, and they're young, and they just had a bad dream about someone, probably some guy with a megaphone yelling at him or something. Literally crying. Bawling her eyes out as she came down the stairs, yelling, "Make him stop!" Oh, <laughs> no decorum, no decorum. This is why you don't come around my house. <laughs> yeah, oh, Drew, I, I came around your house. The kids were naked. His oh, there were, were two. Naked. Really? They were two. They were two, but they were still naked. And jumping off the, the <laughs> and jumping off the furniture. I was worried that they were going to get hurt. Drew has it turned his back to the children. Didn't seem to care about their welfare. It was very distracting. <laughs> I could barely eat. So uh, I just sort of swore off the visits. When is it okay, not okay to be naked anymore? Uh, I mean, what ages? Yeah, yeah I, uh, true. What is the age where you got to put some underoos on? Well, you, you put it on, you know, two is when they're throwing it off. But around eight to ten, they suddenly get incredibly modest. Then yeah, it's so like, it's got to go on again. Mean? Oh, mine said, like, I'm in the bathroom. Keep the door locked. How yeah, dare yeah. you? Okay, so that's they're good, outraged. right? Yeah. Well, yeah, but then what about swimming? Like, cause you know, you know, they'll they'll, they'll hit the pool, yeah. up until about ten naked, right? No, well, maybe maybe no. about seven. Yeah, no, seven. No. It, it it really the stuff really uh, it comes on strong. The modesty part. Yeah, but what age? Mm, five to seven in there. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's when I head in and grab a beer because the show's <laughs> over. Yeah. I mean, I'm not until a pedophile, 20, but you know, until you're 25 and right. then clothes start coming and off. It again. comes off again. All right. Let's. Uh, we got a question for Jeff. Uh, by the way, one I'm sure he's never. Uh, heard before. Someone wants to know what your favorite and least favorite uh, Oh, wait a minute. Who is your favorite and least favorite rock and roll Jeopardy celeb? Oh, I thought it was what? a survivor question. Oh my god. Who was oh, your... Uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, Jeff hosted uh, rock and roll uh, Jeopardy. Yes. For VH1. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were some good people on there. The uh, Mark McGrath was always yeah. a fun guest. Yeah. He's, and he's bright. People, I mean, he the, did the, so the, well. rare, the rare rock star who went to college. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now he's extra. 
He's an yeah, extra. He's on extra. How fun is that? He he was great. He was like the grand champion yeah, he on never the show, lost. right? He never lost. And you know who else was really funny was Joe Walsh. Because <laughs> Walt, the, the, the idea of taking Joe Walsh and putting him in a game in which he not only has to read a question, but then tell his brain to push a button right. that will light up a big, never going to happen. And, yeah. and after the first commercial, uh, he had nothing. I don't think he had even... Well, no, I mean, that, that was like a Saturday Night Live sketch, <laughs> Joe Walsh, on that show. It, it was like Sean Connery on the Saturday Night Live version of Jeopardy. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like he, he, he cannot form a sentence, and right? And he said, he goes, yeah, there's, a, there's just a whole 10-year period there I don't remember. Oh, and my God. you knew he was serious. serious. Right. It was a decade lost. <laughs> right. Least favorite was the guy from... Um, Oh, uh, uh, you know it's scary. Uh, poison. Ch Chumbawamba, poison. No, uh, oh, the guitar the, player. Oh, uh, oh, oh, De 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 Deville. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Right, I'm gonna I'm drove gonna, me. C. Deville. We got CC Deville. Yeah. yeah. He wouldn't shut up, and he had this voice like this. He thought was so charming. Right. Super, super just like shut it. Brooklyn-y kind of uh, just crazy uh, voice and obnoxious. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. he's been on this show. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so that's your least there? favorite. Yeah. Who is this? Oh, you didn't oh, even hey, introduce Hans. me. My name's Hans. Hey. Hey, Hans. What's happening? Not too much, man. Thank you for answering my question. And I had another one for, for Dr. Drew and for your guest. Um, do you make any kind of, uh, say, uh, you know, allowances for people that are on medication if they're on Survivor? Like if they have some kind of, like, you know, blood pressure medication or something? No. Are they allowed to take that? No. What they're, they're, they're probably going to be ruled out of the show, though, right? Yeah. They're screened out. Yeah. If if you you know if you smoke you better get on nicorette soon if you if you're a drinker you know you're going to dry up there's no help you get condoms tampons and sunscreen oh you get you, you get condoms. condoms yeah well I I didn't oh. you know I I don't think we talked about that last time no. you were here that's interesting that is interesting I, is, is that is that just a well, decency thing or an insurance no, they, they thing or they what? They want to have these people having sex, right? Well, That's sort of part of the wouldn't injury. be bad. Yeah. yeah, I don't think anybody's ever had had full on sex, but um, I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a liability issue too. I know? saw the Rupert sixty nine episode. Well, that was tough to watch, Drew. Did you well, ever see that? Oh yeah, him and um, he yeah he he was uh, on top of Johnny Fairplay and. Uh, it was almost unwatchable. What it was what really, was this? Uh, you're probably back at camp beating off or downloading some porn or doing some spear fishing or something. But uh, yeah, you got to watch the show once in a while. It was controversial. I don't remember Very this. Very controversial. Yeah. Big uh, big Rupert on top of uh, Johnny wow. Fairplay. Yeah. Nice. I love Johnny Fairplay. Yeah, he's great. I don't he, know where a, the hell he is now, but I miss that kid. That guy is a classic jackass. He is absolutely what he appears to be. You yeah. want to punch him. Yeah. But you yeah. want him to get back up because yeah. you want to talk to him some more. And then hit and him then again. And punch him. Yeah. Yeah. And what about uh, how, how often, by the way, for the uh, something, something like the All-Stars? I mean, I think it worked incredibly well. I and mean, people were into it in a big way, right? I guess. You, I'm, I, I, you don't like it? I didn't like Not it. Not pure? I just don't think you can play the game with all that personal baggage. These guys now know each other, and, and guys like Hatch or Colby, those guys have no chance because people are irritated that they were so popular. Right. Mm. Rupert right. would be the first one voted out in the next All-Star. You think so? Yeah. Oh, there's so much envy about Rupert right now. Really? Interesting. Oh, you're America's favorite. Oh, really. interesting. So you're oh. gone. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. On the other hand, it's really fun It's <laughs> to watch a, a game. like It's like your team when you know your players, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, it was really, uh, it was really a, a good idea. And I, 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 I don't think you would do two in a row, and I don't think you'd do one every other year. But certainly, yeah, eh, four or five years from now, you could pop another you one really out. I really think we'll be on four or five years from now. I, the yeah. show... Barring, you know, uh, something uh, horrific in a lawsuit, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't see it ever going away. It's almost... It's, it's then again, like I don't, a, I don't yeah. see that not happening. Oh, that's... Yeah, yeah, no. No, that's, <laughs> that's probably this year, Why? but just yeah. not saying anything. But <laughs> I, I, it's like a game show in that it's a great format, and as long as you have yeah. a, a solid host in, in yourself and a solid format in terms of the rules and how the show's structured, who... Who they're always going to have hardcore fans. I, I just can't imagine it ever going away. At least uh, I, maybe I'm saying that for selfish reasons because I enjoy it so much. All right, let's talk to Dan real quick before we go to break. Has a question for uh, Jeff, which I'm sure he's heard before, but ask again. Go ahead, Dan. 
Yeah, I was wondering, uh, this is for Jeff and Adam, if, mm -hmm. uh, if Jeff, has Survivor ever planned on having a celebrity Survivor? And if so, Adam, would you do it? <laughs> uh, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, we, well, <clears throat> in the beginning we did. After season two, when it was really big and it, you know, beat Friends and it was the most watched show, everybody was talking about that. And the mm -hmm. problem was lining up schedules with actors who have little hiatus windows, but then right. they get a movie and they can't promise they'll do it and all that. We probably wouldn't do it now, but no. I, I to me the the show has a sort of purity to it that and and plus since then there's been other attempts at these yeah. sort of um, a celebrity get me out of here kind of debacles that fell flat on their face. Although, albeit you could argue that they didn't actually have celebrity. You know, Nikki Zering's uh, sister is not exactly what you call it. Well, and they caved into them. Those guys complained and got tents, and then they right. complained and they got food. It right. wasn't uh, right. But would you do it? Uh, I, I would definitely consider it. I'm that big a fan of the show, but it is a hairy show. I mean, the idea, you know, with just seeing the bugs crawling around is uh, is enough to uh, freak me out. But now I didn't know you got condoms, so you know that uh, <laughs> I could You're be in, back huh? on. All right, uh, I would definitely uh, give some consideration. Here, the real question is, you wouldn't want, you know, but I'd be way down on the list of uh, guys you'd be going after. Believe me, you would start at the top, and by the who time would you be got at the to top. Me, I, I, well, you, you would, your fantasy answer would be, you know, John Travolta and whoever, but then realistically, that would never happen. And it'd probably be like, uh, what Bonaducci said? No, get Carol on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it would work. All right. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. Jeff Probst in studio tonight from Survivor. We'll be right back after this. Talk station. New Found Glory, Good Charlotte, Marilyn Manson. Wow. Really good show. That is a hell of a show. But so, first up, Rob Schneider. That's right. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Rob Schneider's in studio tonight. He brought us uh, both uh, grenade-sized uh, avocados from his uh, own tree. So, yes, uh, so we have many fruits, my wife and I. Those of you who are uh, listening to the show, uh, well, we got a caller from Wisconsin over here. Who's Ooh, eating her heart out. It must be late let's out there. Go ahead, put yeah, let's put, let's put her on. The point is, is, the is uh, yeah. Rob uh, has either uh, picked himself or more likely had his assistant pick no, no, a no. large avocado. I got a big tree and I got the, the this pole. Is, this is a pineapple, the pineapple size or papaya sized avocado. Let's, let's put it this way. If I uh, threw this at your head, you would think you would <laughs> Bad die. Times, yeah. And if I put it in a trebuchet... <laughs> <laughs> I could do some damage. Melissa? Sure, the Trebuchet yeah. Show. You're uh, calling from uh, Wisconsin? Yeah. And uh, how cold is it there tonight? Very cold. It's like probably like uh, 13 degrees out right now. Mm -hmm. But it's crazy here. It's actually too. warm. It's actually warmed really? up for them. Yeah. It was yeah, unbelievable it was last week. Below, like if, all last week. And have you ever seen an avocado? Yes. I okay. Have you eaten an avocado? You've cooked with avocados. Yes. Well, not really cook. I make dip and stuff. Good. Uh, but well, by the good. way, you, you, you want to hear what a, what a horrible <laughs> cook my wife is? I walked in the kitchen one day, saw her peeling an avocado oh, like yeah. it was an orange. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. And she's like, what? And I was like, are you are you serious? Like, did you know I was going to walk in? <laughs> like I said, you know, when I was masturbating and I said that I knew you were coming in and it was a joke. Is it that kind of thing? She's like, No. No, this is how this is how you do it. I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill your mom. This is horrible. Oh, by the way, uh, speaking of uh, uh, traumatizing on the wife, uh, let me just say one thing. We, we get to bless it one second. Just remind me of something, Drew. You know, there's uh, there's like we got every invention we need. It's like there's 32 different kinds of bottle openers. You know, yeah. right? Yeah. Cork, cork pullers, yeah. wine and bo yeah. bottle. Wine. I don't need 32. I need like two good ones, or even just one. When is the toilet timer flusher thing going to come in? My my wife has now discovered <laughs> the third big duke floating in the toilet <laughs> with her. And and here's what happens. You know what happens? I'm on the phone. He doesn't want to flush. Oh, yeah, this yeah. is what this is what happens. No, you're doing it's, business on the phone, you're doing Mr. President. President. Yeah, and then yes, you flush. Sir. You don't yes, want sir. people to know where you, you are. You don't want them to know who you are. So you so stand you, and up. And then you get up and, and you, you walk, walk away, away. And then she comes in. And, yeah, well, you know so what? I have a feeling this wasn't that's, floating. It was left. It was a big dump. Was it standing straight up? And, she gave me. She gave me. It was pointed toward Mac. <laughs> she, she gave me this one. She goes, uh, 
I was in the living room and and uh, I I was listening to a headphones and I was skipping rope and she she came out in the hall and she just looked at me she was like uh, someone who was landing a carrier on a deck she did the two fingers like yes you know, and I said what and she goes come here she did the wave and I'm and I'm still I'm like I'm skipping rope I'm like what she goes. Send it. And she starts Keeping guiding me in. She walks me all the way down the hall, through the thing, walks me on the bed. What, what, what is this? Then goes right down to the toilet. I'm like, all right. That's humiliating. But if I had, if I had the flood, like. Well, you sure. know what? You can have that same uh, sound that you wanted for the cell phone. It's a zing, zing. That zing sound could tell her not to go into the toilet for No, a just a timer for the toilet. How, how about oh, okay. this? How about this? A flushing timer. Oh, that's Here's 30 deal. seconds. All right. It, it's just a pressure. It's a pressure switch, which is. After your your ass gets down onto the seat, if, and and if the cat jumps up on, it's not active. It's got to be more than like seventy pounds hits okay, the yes. seat, right? Uh, let's make it sixty for Asians. Okay, <laughs> the ass hits the seat okay. and it clicks on. Now, after the <laughs> ass comes off the seat, it flushes within five minutes of that time, maybe uh, maybe good. two minutes. That's it. There could never because this happens. All the time to me, and I don't know why, but I'm humiliated by it. Oh, why are you humiliated? Well, maybe I do. <laughs> All right. All right, but uh, this is a good invention, right? Yeah, it's a great. Uh, it, should be, it should be. Or I was maybe the way we, well, a flush where you push it down and it starts to slowly come up before it actually. But, but just the water. No, but the water, the flush. Yeah. No, what you don't want is that loud noise while you're on right. the phone. Right. Yeah. That's just right. Telling the person on the other line you're not important. And yeah. I don't know what it is about having right. people thinking you're doing anything on the phone that's humiliating. Like they call you at four thirty in the morning. Were you asleep? No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm right. I'm right. What is that in the background? Is that the TV? No, that's nothing. Just car <laughs> drove by. Are you smoking a cigarette? No, 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 no. no. Like, why can't you do anything on the phone? Like, right. if I find you talk to your best friend, but he finds out you're taking a crap. It's a big I deal. Know. I call my friend Josh Lee. He's a comedy writer, and this guy, and I'm talking to him, and all of a sudden I hear something like ding, ding, and I, he, I didn't find out. Are you in the bath right now? He says, Yeah, he's perfectly comfortable. Like in the, in the tub, p- in the tub. Wow, he's in the he's uh, hours. He's in there, and it just he's perfectly comfortable being on the phone. Oh, wow, I like to get, I like to talk to his therapist and start using him, <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> It's a comfortable, confident man. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, you like avocados. Yeah. It's 13 degrees in Wisconsin, and your question is? Um, I have a question. Um, my boyfriend, um, we've been going together for about three years now. Mm-hmm. Um, lately, it's like he's trying to push me away, and I just don't understand why. Um, and then it's like he'll, like, pick fights with me. Just Melissa, like- here, here's the thing about... And it, and then relationships like at your age. Yeah, but the, the, like when he leaves me, like, or I leave him, I get sick of it or whatever. Or he'll say, oh, I don't want to be with you and I just want to be friends. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And I'll get over it for like, and then I'll he'll leave call him you. alone for like a week. And then he'll call me and be like, yeah. I love you, I miss you, and this and that. And then it, yeah. it just cycles back and forth. And it's just like, I'm getting really sick of it. And like I've told him like to- so many times. I'm just like, what is it? Know. What is it that you want to do? I. I love him, but I want, I like, I want to leave him, but it's just like, when I do and when I get comfortable, like, being by myself, you know, after the first week, it's just like, oh, okay, you know, I can do something. Okay, a couple oh. things here. First of all, I think that, that I, I love him, but I want to get away from him. I don't think that exists after 35. It's like, yeah, no. I'm done. I'm going to get away. That's yeah. it. I, I, you, don't, you don't fool yourself anymore. No, with you that. pray I, one of your friend's bones or such. By the way, just you alone. take it easy on yourself because it's extremely common. Everyone... This is uh, this is like yeah. you know, the guy. He wants something else. The grass is greener, and a week later, he realizes, you know, I got this though. Does he have sex when he comes back with you? Um. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, stop that. Stop that, and so he'll stop coming back. It. Yeah. That's what he's coming back for. But see, I'm, like, it's like I need it too, you know. So it's like, okay, yeah. whatever. You know? All right. Well, Here, okay. Here's, okay. But let, let me make this uh, analogy that Drew, <laughs> you know. I don't know what the average time, you know, people quit drugs or cigarettes or booze or whatever it is they're trying to quit. It's three or four times before it takes. Yeah. And the same with relationships. You've been with somebody yeah. with, for three years, yeah, especially, yeah. you know, she's 20, so she got to get 16, 17 right, years couple, old. Couple shots. You break up. And then you get back, and then you break up, and you get mm-hmm. back. It's just like three, two, three times Max. before it actually takes. And as you get older, you just start realizing, hopefully, that uh, when you break up the first time, maybe uh, maybe you should just stick with that plan yeah. instead of bouncing back. Yeah. But this thing is sort of, this is what happens when a relationship is sort of coasting to a stop. Yeah. It's sort, uh, sort of yeah. like, you know Eventually, what if you don't quit, he's going to quit. Like when a car's running out of gas, every once in a while it catches, and it's like, uh, uh, <laughs> you know. But it's running yeah. out of gas, but it'll catch every once in a while. And <laughs> but pull you know for what? You know block. what caused it finally to 
grind to a halt, right? Her love of avocados no, and living no, in Wisconsin. Somebody does something with somebody. Yeah, somebody eventually. finds somebody else. That's uh, it. Uh, Pow! Just boom! Now it's over. Yeah. That's it. It would be nice if there was an event that made it sort of that you couldn't get past. You know what I mean? That, right, uh, right. But she, she hasn't set any boundaries in this relationship with this guy. She keeps taking him back, and so he gets what he wants. Yeah, and then, right. you know, she's the, uh, feeling like not the most highest self esteem in the world, so she keeps taking him back. And you just got to find if this is this the guy you really want to spend time no, with? No, no. Nah. No. Nah, yeah, okay. That nah, just break up. And look, anyone who's been with anyone from 17 to 20 needs, needs to, to break, break up, up anyway. That's right. Otherwise, and it's good to, like, be alone for a while and to scare yourself. Like, I don't know what I could be alone. It's good to explore the, the I don't know what it's like to be alone. Yeah. Right. Plus, you, then what happens? You get engaged to somebody you've been sort of on yeah, and yeah, off Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want that. Yeah, just break up. He was somebody you're excited about. Paul? Yeah. A man who shares your passion for avocados. Huh. What's up, Paul? I'm great. Hold on. I don't like this exporting of our our fruits and vegetables to other places. You know, it used to be one of our things. Like, hey, Hawaiians had their pineapples, we had our avocados, and we could <laughs> laugh at other other cities and states. Now everyone's got something. Everyone's got everything, though. I've, yeah. I've, I've got a, a patient brings a bunch of Hawaiian papayas every time they come in. And That's they, nice. They, they brought a bunch, and they are so good. It's nice, no, but yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if, you, like if you live in Hawaii, you've got to be oh. angry. You've got to be angry about that. <laughs> You know, yeah, it's like tumbleweeds in Hawaii and papaya. They're just everywhere. They just they grow oh, like they weeds. So oh, good. They're amazing. I love that. Oh, oh, little uh, little lime on there. Got it. What's happening, uh, Paul? Home, Indigenous originally to Brazil, but no. really, yeah. yeah once you, you know bring... how they make fun of is the Portuguese over in uh, Hawaii. Oh, really? The Portuguese guys, are the ones they make fun of, yeah. They don't have Pollocks. The Hawaiians make fun and of them? pineapples, also from Portugal. I mean, I'm sorry, from uh, Brazil. The Hawaiians wow. make fun of the Portuguese. Yeah, that's the, that's the person they make fun of. It's like Seattle. the Chinese and the the Hawaiians and the they make fun of the Portuguese. I don't know why. Yeah, huh. just the way just the way it works out. Hey, Paul. Yeah. Hey, Paul. Yeah. Here. Here. Go ahead. What's so, happening? Yeah, I can't go to sleep unless I have sex or masturbate. Me either. Okay, next call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what? You're, that's you're uh, yeah. You're a guy. What you do? do? Who you know? It's a choice. If a choice, sure. Who wouldn't want to? Are you yeah. saying you think you have a problem? Yeah, because um, I have a girlfriend, and we have sex like five to six times a day. <laughs> Come on. No. Mm, I don't know. It's bogus. It's bogus. Uh, it's bogus. bogus. Right, I don't right, know. Right, right, okay. I like, uh, here's how you know it's bogus. No question. Yeah. I bang my, the bejesus out of my girlfriend five, you think eight times wrong, a day. Man? So uh, do you know what the problem is? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you got a yeah. boner, you idiot. Jack off. Problem is, it's too self congratulatory and, and towards you. Here's the reason, guy. I, you know, guys beat off before they go to bed, not not because they can't do it or they won't. You know, they have to do it or they won't be able to go to sleep. It's because they know it's going to be good eight hours before they can do it again. <laughs> it's to me, it's like why you take a leak before you take a drive to San Francisco. It's yeah. like you know, you get one no in. toilet in your car. You got to right. get one in. It's gonna, also, you're going to be down for a while. Could happen, earthquake or something. Sure. Well, okay, yeah, Meteor. yeah. Give me, let me give you, yeah, let me give you an example. You're, you didn't beat <laughs> off, and now, like a missing piece of a sky lab <laughs> goes right through your bedroom and crushes you, yeah. and there you are. Oh, that's, for, that's it, it, oh, it's a tragedy. Hey, tragedy. Here's what gets me. Oh, here's what you. I always think about. Like tonight, I was on the way over here. So you know, I better go pick up a little dinner. So I, uh, I make the, you know, my my buddy drop stop at a place. We get some food. Now I'm going by the food section of Wild Oats there, and there's sushi. Right. I'm thinking, if you're going to buy sushi at, at, a, at a supermarket, if, just in case, it, chances are it's not bad. But if it is bad, no one's going to feel sorry for you. We're like, what were you thinking? Right. Getting sushi in a supermarket. In a supermarket, just like you know, people who go out and do those like uh, para, you know, parasailing in Mexico, like, and, and right. then they get killed thrown yes. the rocks. Well, what were you thinking, parasailing in Mexico? You know, so I'm always thinking of like, if what you're going to ha- get sympathy from or not. In, when yeah. you do something, in, in yeah. the, when you know, sleeping with a, a Haitian hooker. But what right. were you thinking without a condom? Why, you know? Right, and it is it is true that uh, the the fact that you're gone is secondary to how you know what took you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm and, convinced I'm going to be crushed by something frozen, a piece of food <laughs> like a pot roast. Or, or how something. about that gigantic? You know, when the the ice that comes out of the, uh, blue the toilet. Ice. No, the toilet uh, yeah, from the ice. plane. Yeah, yeah. That's, they call Smacks, it blue ice. Blue ice. I don't yeah. know the term. They, what? It's the, the stuff. Sometimes it, there's a leakage of the Blue plane ice, true. Uh, that'll be frozen at thirty thousand feet from a plane, and it's the uh, the blue, uh, you know, liquid the toilet stuff from yeah. the toilet, and it'll actually leak out from the plane, and it will drop and be a chunk of ice and could just kill you. Hey, yeah, you yeah. didn't know that. 
Urban myth. No, no, no. It goes. No, it actually, uh, went, went through a guy's boat and stuff. Oh my God. Well, here's the whole thing about planes and boats and all forms of transportation. Before just a few years ago, somebody was like, "Look, we're thirty thousand feet in the air. Dump Why it. should we store a big barrel of uh, poop to bring back with us to the <laughs> airport? For Christ's yeah, sake! Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, we're I'm over not, the ocean. Who's going to know? Not bringing macadamia nuts back from Hawaii. We got a big tub of you know. Uh, we got enough weight. First <laughs> off, there's weight issues on the yeah. plane. Secondly, why, who wants a big tub of crap? Well, just we're over the Atlantic. We're thirty five thousand feet in the air. Stop just it. drop in the ocean. Yeah. Cruise liners used to do this too. Wait, they, trains we, well, in, in yeah, Europe. People in Winnebago. Right? Oh yeah. And in, in, in trains in Europe, they just dump it out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no, dump it. It's just a hole. It just goes oh, right under the track. Yeah, I, I, I think oh. this, it, you know, maybe this start. Now, people never did this uh, back when they just rode bicycles. Did they just, uh, yeah, guys crap. just cramping while they're riding that crap bike with a giant moving. wheel? Yeah, but in, in England, Why back in, so far <laughs> uh, so the, the Middle Ages, what they do, they just throw the crap uh, over the fence. If I don't see it, and right. the neighbor doesn't throw it back, I'm just where I'm going to put it. All right. Yeah. Until they start throwing it back, and then the plague. Yeah, then <laughs> came the decorative popcorn tin, <laughs> and then he falls <laughs> into the toilet. <laughs> All right, we're break. All right, let's uh, let's take ourselves a little break. Rob Schneider here tonight. We'll be right back. Hey, yo! It's Love Line, the best of Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Doctor Drew. Let's uh, continue to power forward mm-hmm. with uh, what I think is already a little too much show for the kids. I mean, it's free. It's not like we're on satellite radio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're really, it's too much show for free. Uh, people are having seizures as we speak. I'm sure of it. Uh, let's hope so. Everyone, enjoy Newfound Glory. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jordan and Chad here tonight from Newfound Glory. Catalyst. Hello. Name of the CD. And, uh, you know, at the risk of uh, sounding like uh, even more ass-kissing is going on toward the newfound Glory CD Catalyst. Good name. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. uh, It's just kind of talking about everything that's going on in the music in our kind of genre. Genre. Yeah. Look up Catalyst, Drew. It, it, to me, means starter. It's like uh, the the, the thing that inactivates things. But it lowers the threshold for it to occur. So it increases the probability of something occurring. The catalyst. Cat- the catalyst is an enzyme, and literally, it's an enzyme that lowers the energy necessary to make a chemical reaction. But then you have, but you have like a, you know, when you have like a two-part uh, uh, polymer, you have the catalyst and the resin. The resin sits around, and then you add a few drops of the catalyst to it, and pow, it's activated. Right. Yeah. There you go. That's a fire starter, that catalyst. That's what the short white guy hustles on the basketball team is. He's a catalyst. <laughs> he don't put the ball in the hoop, but he gets the ball, he gets the fast break going. Yeah. In yeah? the biological system, they think of it as bringing things together to make the reaction occur. Mm-hmm. Well, with everything with the name, with the cover art, it's all about what's going on right now. Yeah, well, it, it looks great. Look to see Thank that uh, big painting. It's really amazing, uh, amazing art. All right, let's, uh, Chris, look up Catalyst. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Something that something ignites awesome. change. Something to do. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> Write a three page essay. Spell it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, place of origin. We'll get back to uh, Mike. Mike? Mike, yeah. the junkie with the girlfriend who doesn't yeah, want to have sex junkie. because she was cheating. All right. Um, that's why she didn't want to have sex because she huh? was cheating, right? That's uh, well, sex. that's what I'm thinking might be going on right now. I know that heroin sometimes causes uh, sexual side effects, but. Yep. Uh, we've always had wonderful sex life, that's what I was saying, and I've never, and it just suddenly it was so drastic about a week ago, and just like tonight, you know, she had a, a friend come in from out of town, she hasn't seen in a year, so she's out having dinner and seeing a movie with him, and mm-hmm. yada, 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 and you know, she's always swearing up and down that nothing's going on, but she's always doing How, how long thing. has she been out of treatment? Uh, true, about three months, about three months since and she got not, out of She's, she's not going to meetings or anything anymore, nothing like that, right? Huh? She's not going to meetings anymore, not talking to her sponsor. No, no, so nothing she, like that. She's yeah. on, she, is she on heroin again, too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah she got back on. Um, is about she using anything else? Huh? Is she using anything else? Uh, we, well, she doesn't do anything else. She's okay. on probation, so she can't smoke pot, which I think is a loaded dung. Why so the she heck can shoot heroin, but she can't probation. smoke pot. Yeah. Oh, she can shoot heroin, but she can't, she can't smoke pot. By the way, if she's high enough, she can probably enjoy a New York Minute, Drew's new movie with the Olsen twins. You're a dick. <laughs> She'd really have to be, you know, pretty. pretty How would you know? Up. You haven't pretty seen sad. it. I read the reviews. Yeah. Sure. I actually have had people had my assistant read me the reviews. 
Not read them to you. Not read, read them for you. Not favorable. Yeah. Let this reviewer call. <laughs> right. I'm going to see this movie, Drew. Yeah, sure. As soon as it comes out on my eyeballs. So they actually start showing in my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to see the movie. I absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm sure. About, I'm absolutely no sure about it. Yeah. I'm a big sport. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Read the book, too. All right. Oh, well, um, hold on. Hold on a second, Chris. So, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to quit heroin, though, right? No, no, no. Oh, no, not really. Um, no. Uh, okay. All right. Well, here's, here's the whole thing. I don't want to sound like uh, Pops Corolla here, but all bets are off while you guys are continuing continuously getting high i mean the the libido the sex the cheating right, the his, whole thing yeah, his thing is why this week well we know that she's cheated in the past we know that she's chaotic she's probably a trauma survivor she may fluctuate between being hypersexual and then completely shut down to sex yeah she may be cheating again she may be having a medical problem. Maybe she's now got hepatitis. Maybe she's got you know, hepatitis C. Maybe does, she's got endocarditis. Doesn't a constant drug use eventually, doesn't everything sort of eventually Break eat into the, into the libido and the Absolutely. sexual function? Absolutely. Steroids, you, whatever. Yeah, it usually isn't such an abrupt shutdown, as Mike is pointing out. That's why he wants to know the solution now. He doesn't, you know, but the, the, the sort of chilling thing for me is that his girlfriend is just an object for him. Yeah, you know, well, she needs to function better. She's getting she high. Uh, yeah, and then there's the thing too. I mean, all bets are off. You're shooting junk, right? I mean, it's just it's yeah. Any that's sad. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Mike, you're a young guy. You sound like a smart guy. As a matter of fact, being smart sometimes screws you up more because you get up in your head and you think you can handle things and you think you can sort of uh, outwill things well, using your IQ. Well, This thing is like, yeah, I know I get endocarditis, I can get hepatitis, I can die. Yeah, how's it gonna be cancer? So anyway. Right. Uh, what, what are you going to do? Right. Like, yeah, that's just denial. It's somehow. Just blocking the experience of seeing yourself as you really are. And and the people that, uh, you know, really uh, are affected by it are the stupid people. He's he's an intellectual. He's got it. He's got to figure it out. All oh. right. Well, good luck. Let's talk to uh, Melissa. Oh, all right. So, Catalyst. Go ahead, Chris. You got it there, buddy? Yeah. Uh, one that precipitates a process or event, especially without being involved in or changed by the consequences and that's what oh. you're going to get if you get the new found oh. glory cd everybody do you hear that <laughs> precipitating a process or an event <laughs> read that again and, and this time what's number two no no uh, read read that one again chris and this time do it like you're trying to move some product you know what i mean really kick it in now <laughs> sell it big new found glory cds coming out called catalyst and i'll tell you why cool. um okay <laughs> one that precipitates a process or event especially without being involved in a, in or changed by the const consequences. Yeah! <laughs> I'll tell you what. If that's Sold. Just, I want to buy 10 copies now. Man, I'm like, I f I'm feeling rocked. <laughs> Are you feeling rocked, Drew? Yes. Yeah. Yay! All right. And half a, half a decibel louder, Chris, is not, that does not constitute yeah. <laughs> bringing something home. Do you know what I'm saying? You want to get behind the mic, buddy. You you got to really learn to punch it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Hey, don't hassle my friend. I'm I'm in with his brother, the oh, Starbucks yeah. Oh, manager. Yeah, as long I'm as your brother's Craig. giving Drew Coffee. thirty cents worth of free uh, Java yeah. once every <laughs> six months. That's what I'm talking about. Drew, who likes free crap more than you? Uh, nobody. 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 Our well, bass player Ian. Really? I yeah. love free oh, crap. Yeah. Oh, we were at a we were at a signing today, and, and every signing, uh, you know, your every signing we do at a store, our label will be like, "All right, you can pick out four items, you know, to take from Tower." I to took buy. Like six. Mm -hmm. Ian, mm -hmm. Ian, Ian's four items are like the Sopranos box set. Oh. Yeah, the I got the Battlestar Galactica box set tonight. <laughs> Ian, Ian <laughs> picked huge. That's gonna be worth something. Like Ian, that. Ian picked like the, shameless the seventy dollar Schind Schindler's List <laughs> special <laughs> package. Oh, he's going right for the box. Yeah, stuff. he grabs four items. Four wow. items. Wow. Not yeah. four DVDs, four like yeah. box sets of ten DVDs. <laughs> yeah, that box stuff, it's like a like a brick of heroin. Like oh, yeah. it's expensive stuff. Yeah. I'm literally a millionaire. I don't even go there. No. <laughs> wow, that's smart though. Yeah. You gotta appreciate it. He said that. four items. He's like, dude, four items, bro. <laughs> Melissa? Hello. What's happening? Um, first of all, I wanna say Adam. You are my god. I think you're the sexiest, most smartest man ever. I think you're so sexy. You're just Yeah. Anderson. Yeah. Every time I'm on um, Every time I'm on the show, there's always one girl that calls really? and says that. Cuz it, it probably only happens t twice when, a year. Well, I mean, every time I'm more of the great magnet again. So we'll right. these guys are. Right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, God bless you, Melissa. Um, and Drew, I just want to say I read your book Cracked and I I thought it was awesome. You did a really good job. Thank you, Melissa. Um, I appreciate that. 
My question is, like, every guy that I've ever liked or all the guys I've ever gone out with have been a-holes to me, and mm-hmm. I want to know why. Is there, like, I was molested when I was little. And you were? Yeah, well, a lot of well. stuff has happened since then. And well, there you go. Was that, that, is that it? Or? Trauma, trauma, things that are traumatizing and shattering in childhood become source of attraction in adolescence. Mm-hmm. That because you're, you're, like, drawn to it. Yeah, and but... You, See, I'm in therapy now, and mm-hmm. it's not helping at all. It just seemed to be getting worse. It will. It'll take about six to eight years, and it will help. Yeah, it takes a long time. Being in your early forties, you yeah, just <laughs> past menopause. No, it takes a long time, and yeah. during that time, the, the therapist will help you make some better choices and see. You'll see what you feel okay. like with that. And I have one more question. Wait a second. What? Who molested you? Uh, the one of my friends. He was a lot older than I was. How old is he? He was twelve or thirteen, How and I was like six. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, that's bad, but you can overcome that. Yeah, you stick yeah. with therapy. What was your other question? Um, I've been having a lot of panic attacks lately, like short breath, and I could all I can think about is just you know when I was little and just a lot of stuff that has happened, and I can't seem to you know get out of that that frame of mind for like an hour. Mm-hmm. 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 All right, what should you do, Drew? Uh, well, the, are you seeing a psychiatrist in addition to a therapist? Yeah. What are they treating you with? Um, Prozac and Wellbutrin. Okay, you may talk, to be sure to talk about the panic, because both of those medicines can make you sort of prone to panic. So maybe a switch ahead. Christina? Yes? You're 19? Yes. What's happening? Um, okay, every time a guy goes down on me, I always feel like I have to pee. Like, it feels really, really good, but, like, I'm scared I'm going to pee on him. Is that mm-hmm. weird? Some guys like that stuff. You might. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have, you, have you had an orgasm when a guy was down there? No. Never, because yeah. I can't let myself get to that point because I'm scared. I'm going to... Why don't you talk to the guy about it? He, he'll, be, he'll be all right, as long as he gets a little bit of warning. Tell him to bring, like, a two-liter jug. Because <laughs> <laughs> some, some women do ejaculate and some do pee. It's just that's what happens. That's Isn't right. that, like, strange when he's down so there? that's like, common? I can't, like, bring myself to it. Like, yeah, I but if you, if, but if, you, if he reassures you that he'll be all right, you know, that just, you know, relax. But that's hey, what I, I like. With right now, I can't even say the word pee without him getting grossed out. Oh, so that's like, not good. He's, like, one yeah. of those, like, oh. you can't say anything like that. Well, so that's wait a common minute. thing is for... Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Well, not common, but not it happens. that common. It happens. Well, 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 hold on like, a second. Is there anything he, like... Cause hold on, Christine, quiet yeah. down. The guy's going down on you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how squeamish can he be? Yeah, you know I what know, I mean? that's true. All right. Let's I, go, ahead and, go ahead and broach it with him. Tell him it feels real good. It feels so good. It's like you're being tickled or something, you know, right. and wet your pants. You know what I appreciate when I'm going down on a lady who's uh, going to whiz? A little heads up. If you ever watch the war movies, uh, the guys in the machine gun nest, and one guy's working the machine gun, the other guy's feeding the cartridge or the yeah. banana clip in there. When he gets it locked and loaded, he does a... Oh, on the top of the head, you know, do that move. Yes. That means it's time to start start firing behind. They do it with the bazooka. Guy loads it in the back, Good pat on the head, time to fire. I need the I need the. It's time to go. <laughs> Urine's yeah. coming. Here it goes. That's time. Time to pull out. Locked and loaded. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Someone could get hurt. Yeah, that tap on the head. The bazooka guy gets. He's down on his knee. You know. What, what's that your, shot? Then what's your move? <laughs> My move. You just like tapping on the. You just like the sound of the tap. I head. like the sound of the tap. I do. Bazooka guys, load. Oh, come on, bro. Yeah. I do. I do the shoulder roll. Okay. I do the slow motion shoulder roll. Yeah, yeah. And and the dive. <laughs> and the big explosion behind me. <laughs> <laughs> the, do that the, move. The piece sends you. Yeah. Usually, some, and freakishly off a pier that's exploding. <laughs> big explosion where I'm going in the water. Yeah. <laughs> Newfound glory uh, here tonight. Yeah, see, it doesn't work. Right? Oh, no. Wait, here we go. There we go. <laughs> We're going to take ourselves a little break. We'll be right back after this. Everyone, it's Love Line, the best of Love Line, that is. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Yeah. Drew. Yeah, we're happy we're not here. And not only that, but the show is representing tonight most of our dearest, dearest of friends. That's right. Where are you right now, Drew? I'm in Sun Valley, Idaho. Sun Valley, yeah. Idaho. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Uh, let's uh, keep moving forward with the best of. And this is 
is a little band called Good Charlotte. Yo, everybody. I'm Adam. Yo, yo. Joel and Benji both here from Good Charlotte. Guys, we're pretty pissed about us playing their song last break. Thanks a lot. And we had to coax them both back into the studio because uh, <laughs> they tore up the lobby pretty good. Put the TV out the window. Yeah. Oh, all right, enough. Hey, hey, Anderson, seriously, I don't want these guys to flip on me, man. Hey, I got to sit in the studio with these mother efforts, you understand? I don't want them cracking my skull. Sorry, guys. It's all right, man. It's okay. Just give me a second. I just want to make sure that nobody heard the song. Liz? Yes? You're 17. What's up? <clears throat> all right. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I love you guys, and I watched the man show tonight. It was so awesome. Thank you. Which yeah. one was it? Um, the one where you did a bit about being gasoline boy. Oh, yeah. It was at the gas station. Yeah. yeah hold on a second. <laughs> Drew, do you remember when we were doing media training? I, was, I sit around, and I think, <laughs> over the weekend. I stew about this over the weekend. When we were first starting Love Line, the TV show, yes, and yes. our idiot, yes. idiot... And, and horrible, and these uh, publicists, horrible, rotten, rotten, vile people <laughs> yeah. were telling us we had to kill a Saturday doing media training, and we had, to, we had to do mock interviews and answer questions and be trained how to answer questions in an interview situation. What did I say, Drew? Kiss, uh, beat it. Waste of time. Yeah. Let's no. go. I stood up in the middle of it, and I said, let's go. What are yes. we doing here? It's beautiful yes. outside. Let's leave. But no, not Drew. No, he wouldn't he listen. Stuck it out. He wouldn't listen. He wouldn't listen. What, that was which one is that? I remember, the week, I remember weekday one. That was media bad. training up in the upstairs there. At upstairs. The, yeah, yeah. I so you've done media training. I thought they only did that. Drew for like did boy media bands. training. Well, I just sat him. there like an idiot. No, no. I just remember. remember what the hell was it? That he asked you. And he you was went in there off with on the O-Town. camera. I wouldn't. You talk. should start a boy band of like doctors. Well, first he wouldn't talk, and then he finally went. What do you think? The, about? the point is, is Drew. Will you just start listening to me? Yes. Just listen to me. Yes, yes. Please. I'm better about it now. Am I not? Liz. Yes. You're 17? I'm sorry. Yes, no, okay. So you love the man show, yeah. I love your rants anyway. Okay. Um, love Dr. Drew. I like Good Charlotte. They're really cool. Thank, Thank you. Right. Thank you. We're all okay. covered. Yeah, Go ahead. Great. Okay. Um, okay. I, I uh, masturbate like once or twice a week. And then I have orgasms. I have sometimes two or three, and that's really great, and I'm okay with that. But sometimes when I go to the bathroom, like especially hmm. when I'm at school, mm -hmm. I have these like little mini intense orgasms, and I make little funny noises when I'm in the bathroom, and that's kind of <laughs> embarrassing. And you what? can't control yeah, funny noises like you're making them funny. Oh, 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 no, <laughs> no, not that. Like you know, just sometimes like <gasps> like something like that, Ooh. or like. And you're telling and no, just <laughs> and you're telling right. us for what reason? Like, what are you calling to ask? You're wondering why this. You're just happens. trying to like entertain yeah. some guys over the radio. No, I'm just playing with you. <laughs> Do you wear a uniform? That's all. I, no, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> oh. No, stupid. Not a bad question. <laughs> What's that, Liz? I go to community college. So, oh, yeah. Seventeen. Yeah. Do you graduate early? Yeah, I graduated in June. Smarty pants. So, what's the deal? Well, what, you're asking... Oh, okay. I'm asking if that's normal or if I need to be you checked are, out for that. Uh, no, you don't need to be checked out for it. Uh -huh. uh, I bet you have that happen sort of like for the day or so after you've masturbated. Is that right? Um, you're more likely to do that then? Yeah, yeah. more likely. It's sort right. of an irritation that happens. And it's really? a, Yeah, it's very common. It's not a big deal. It happens you're, to me all the time. And the fact that you're multi-orgasmic <laughs> is, is what this is about. You're, uh, you're one of those lucky few. <laughs> I hope and, mom's not and, listening. Uh, yeah, hi, mom. And um, <laughs> All right. so you're blessed. Yeah. Right. Nothing you can do about it. Good for no you. Good, good for you. The Australians would say, good on you. Yeah. They'd like to do that. <laughs> Gabby? Yes. You're 23? Yes. What's up? Hi. Um, well, basically, uh, my boyfriend and I pretty much broke up um, because he thinks I'm cheating and I'm not. I never have. I'm extremely faithful. If you're listening, Scott. That's right. <laughs> liar! Liar! Whore! Liar! Whore! You know it! <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I can understand where he's coming from. Um, uh -huh. When we first were going out, we were very sexually active. Um, and now it's gotten to, I just don't get turned on anymore. It's not him. I'm just not able to get horny anymore. And when we first met, I had just 
been involved in stripping, and mm-hmm. I did it for about five years. Five years. Yeah, and um, I heard the money's good, so it wasn't just involved. You know what? The money is so good, but it's so. Hard <laughs> I was on kidding. Your soul. I was kidding. I don't want to hear about it. It is good. It's hard on it's your really soul. Hard on your soul. Tell no, me what, what happened. We got to wear the stiletto heels, Drew. It's rough. Not your. Talking about your feet. That. It's really hard Thank on you. on your inner <laughs> person, you know. And I. What do you I, experience? Well, let's just count by the second. What 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 is it that's difficult? What does it do to you? Um. <sighs> It really makes you feel like a piece of me, and you... T- how, how does it make you feel about men? Well, I haven't had very good experiences with men. All right, but hold on. I, I would argue that stripping doesn't make you feel bad or hate men. It's wanting to strip give, well, gives you what, what it is, to hate guys What it is already. is that she, you're sexually abused when you're growing up or physically abused. Mm-hmm. You, which was it for you, both? Um... It was, well, I don't know what you'd consider. It was more involved with a couple boys that were a little older than I was, and they mm. just kind of humiliated me. All right. Mm. That's a start. Yeah, so it's it probably something even happened before that. All yeah. right. Oh, well, so anyway, no. be that as it may. Be that as it may. So yes. then, then a way of trying to empower herself is to get involved in this situation where she is the focus of the attention, using her sexuality to control men. Yeah. Then, she, then they hate men for participating with them in this thing that makes them feel so demeaned. Yeah. So it's a dub- it just it's a never ending cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them. Some also, th- some. Then there's the ones that just want to party. <laughs> yeah. Some Those are the ones I. You see. know what's interesting is is every girl who's ever had some kind of like wh- whether they stripped or whether they were like crazy party bisexual girl or any any of those girls that are crazy like have that kind of alter lo- like the stripping lifestyle or whatever. Girls gone wild. They never have. There's always something more to their. Story. There's always something more, you know what I mean? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's it's the opposite of what they show, yeah. which is ironic. Like They're they angry show the men. power, like anger, right. but really there's like something going on, like, you know. Hey, Gabby? Yeah. All right, so it, wh- which place did you work at, by the way? <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Why? Because I don't right. think that's relevant. <laughs> I don't right, but wanna the say point that. is that, that <laughs> You don't want to give shout out? There's a piece. <laughs> with, well, hold on a second. I'll tell you whether it's relevant or not. All right, it's not relevant. You're lucky. You <laughs> dodged a bullet there. The pe- <laughs> blah, 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 Gabby coming to stage. She got manhandled by a couple older guys when she was 12 years old. Feeling bad about herself. Doesn't like her dad. But don't worry, Jets. That's going to translate to extra horny lap dances for you. Show you appreciate her. Two for one for the next five minutes. Jade, Jade, stage five. Jade, stage five. Blah, 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 blah. Businessman's lunch. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, Gabby. I told him to play corn. Yeah. But there's a couple things. Now. One is that, that that whole sexual piece of you becomes dissociated from everything else. Mm-hmm. Because it's now re-traumatized and cut off from... It's not integrated into who you are. And then you have all these kind of conflicted feelings about men. And your boyfriend obviously represents that. So you're, you're, sort, of, you're sort of dissociated from your sexual right. self. So it's time to get a little help. Gabby. Get a little therapy and just stop locking horns with your boyfriend about who's cheating and who's not. You're not doing it. I don't trust this guy completely. Does he wear cowboy boots? <laughs> I just, you know, huh? I've heard several does people he? tell me. Does he wear cowboy boots? No, he does not wear. What about wife beaters? Several people what kind tell of car does he drive? Several people tell you. They tell me that usually when someone accuses you of something like that, it's what they're, they're the doing themselves. Doing. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes. He, he, at, the very least, at the very least, it's what he would do if he were in your place, probably. And so, you know, thinking like you... He figures you oh, must. Okay, yeah, but yeah. Here, here's the whole deal. Gab, Gabby, don't get focused on him. Just I mean, focus. I just, if he's like, can't trust me, I should just be okay. Yes, huh? don't, get over it. But here's the deal. You need some therapy. Period. Period. He story. probably does too. Yeah. Yeah, true. but stop focusing on him, okay? So. Shut up. That's enough. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus. Just get some therapy. <laughs> look, you know, no, people no. are screwed up, get hooked up with people that are more screwed up than they are so they don't have to look at themselves. It's like, hey, I found the one person that's more effed up than I am, so I can I can spend all my attention on them, and I'll never have to look in the goddamn mirror. I've done Just it so get, many times. Yeah, I was there talking about go. myself. There you too. Go. Me too. Michael, the binge. Sure. You're uh, 19. Yep. What's up? Well, <clears throat> I've been going with this girl for about six months now, Word. and she only likes it anal. You know, we've done it the regular way once. That was the first time, and during that. She asked me to do it that way, and ever since then, she doesn't really want it the other way. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if it was me, her, or it's what. her. That's her. That's what she likes. How is she a big gal? No, not really. Not really. Are you a small guy? No, man. 
Uh, <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no, well, no. I'm hey. just saying, I wouldn't take that as a compliment. If she was like, <laughs> no, I whack. can't feel it when you're over there. I over can't here. have an orgasm unless something is in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, true, <man>. true testimonial. <laughs> All right, so that's the way she likes it. Uh, do you like yeah. it that way? I mean, it's cool, whatever, but I prefer the other way. But, I mean, whatever she likes is cool with me as long as she's satisfied. It's all good. Right. All right, well, well, why don't you tell her, though, maybe that... Uh, say, baby, maybe, maybe. Save this, save this for well, a special well, occasion. Well, let's mix it up a little, bit. Yeah. <laughs> Holidays, <laughs> Easter, it, I, things like that. I've hinted it or whatever. It's like, you know, hey, have a... So I've heard about this other way that they got... That the kids are doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, did you see that article in Cosmo? There's this other hole they found. Just leave like a porn laying around. Oh, look, look at what they're doing. This uh, this doctor found a second hole. They called. Apparently, it's the one babies come out of. This is disgusting. I just heard. I was just talking to some friends, and anyway, Kurt said maybe we should try that hole. Kurt. I mean, if you don't want it, that's cool. You know, yeah, you got to hint around. Oh, boy. Start leaving statistics laying around, you know? Yeah. Boy, does my dork smell. <laughs> <laughs> wonder what that is. Well, anyway. How do you want your what, eggs? What's for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Don't be scared to tell her what you want. That, that's I mean, what you I guys, you, I mean, yeah. you obviously don't have that open of a relationship if you can't talk about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's she, right. just asked to have can't a talk about penis, put, like his, put her anus, but yeah. aside from that, they're very an old-fashioned yeah. relationship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very old-fashioned, very closed down, very Did Victorian, Victorian. Saw, that's right. right. Yeah, the corsets have to come off. It's like, Kim? <laughs> Oh, my yeah. God. You're 19? Oh What's up? Yeah. What has my life degenerated into? I have a question. I actually have two. Um... That's going to cost extra. In August, I fell from a zip line, and I broke my pelvis. A zip line? Yeah. What does that mean? It's like a rope that's connected, like, from, like, a tree. With the uh, like a, pulley? Yeah. Oh, wow. And, like, I, like, lost my grip, and I fell, and I landed on my right side. Were we supposed to make it to the lake kind of thing? And Actually, it was, like, homemade, and it was just down <laughs> to the ground. Just down to the ground? Yeah. And wh how high were you when you lost your grip? Uh, 20 feet. Wasn't James West the only one that ever traveled on those things? So you made your... <laughs> yes, he started the whole actually, zip line thing, and then James Bond, and then any guy named James <laughs> used that as a main form of transportation. Wow. They're when, hard to figure out, those things. When I was 10, a pulley fell on my head. Oof. A pulley fell on your mm -hmm. head from where? I looked it up to the clothesline. Oh, we shit. found this old thing in like the, in like the <laughs> woods the or something. Dumping. You know, like the garbage and big mm -hmm. pulley. And this big, like, 20-pound pulley. We hooked it up to the oh clothesline. And it fell on your head? Is that, that was what the happened? first one to try it. I'll try it. Yeah, that's what happened. It fell right on my head. There you head. go. Yeah. A career in yeah. punk. Yeah. Career in rock now. Kim? Yeah. All right, so uh, you broke your pelvis. Yeah, and so I'm on crutches for three months. And, like, I can stand and everything. I'm supposed to be, like, non-weight-bearing on my right side because that's where it broke most oh, of Oh, so you, you, do you know what part of the pelvis you broke? I broke the right side, and they had a pin and plate it, and then I broke the front part. The pubic ramus? Yeah. The ramus broke, and then the sort of the pelvic, the, the, the sort of fin on the side of the pelvis cracked, right? Yeah. I was okay. just going to say that. And, like, I can stand on it and everything, and it's okay. How long yeah. were you in bed for? Um, about three weeks. Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> that hurts. Yeah, it kind of sucked really bad. Yeah, you know, I, I would have like, hate to have been there. I would have been laughing, and then eventually I would have stopped laughing, and then it would have been like, oh no, you would have been—you were screaming bloody murder, right? Um, actually, I just slept a lot. No, no, no. I mean, no. When, I mean, it when, it, happened. when it happened, your boyfriend's name isn't Joe, is um, it? No, no. Well, actually, I didn't cry. I—I I don't know. There was people around, and I have like a high tolerance for pain. Good. Wow. So, that's, that's noble. Yeah. So anyway, you want to know when you can have sex? Yeah. Tonight. No, uh, it's going to oh. be at least six weeks, I would think. You're going to have to ask the... It's been six weeks. Has it been six weeks now? Yeah, it was August 10th. And you're three months on what non-weight-bearing, right? Right. Wow. Take your time. Yeah. Uh, you, have a, you have a guy in mind? One of the orderlies? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Um, no. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> you got a boyfriend, though? Yeah. The man's servant. Really? I think it was the last guy. Well, also, couldn't you sort of see how it... Felt yeah, I was going to say, you'd have to try sort of positioning yourself. I think, but I, I would talk to the orthopedist. I would. You I, would? Yeah. Well, you yeah, know. For sure, six weeks, for sure. But beyond that, I'm not How clear. old are you? She's 19. 19. You got plenty of years ahead of you. Just take your time. Oh, well, well, yeah. 19, but... you got to wait. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 
my other question was like earlier you were talking about this girl and she was like hospitalized when she was yes. like five or something. Yes. And like now she's like helpless or whatever. Yes. But I was diagnosed with cancer when I was 16. Wow. And like ever since then, I, like during my whole time in the hospital and all my treatments and everything, I was really passive and I just let him do whatever, you know, to get it. Right. And like ever since then, I've kind of been passive and like I don't really say no. I I don't know. I have like a hard time saying no. Well, it's about it's interesting that imagine if that had happened to you when you were eight. How sort of ingrained into your mm, makeup five. that become? Or five in her case. Are you doing all right now? Yeah, I go and see the doctors all tomorrow. But but at your age, at least you have a you have a sort of an insight and a, an observation of how passive you become. You got to sort of learn your way out of that. Well, she's you like, can she's do so that. passive, she wouldn't hang on to the rope. So passive, she wouldn't complain about the misery she was in. She was just yeah. taken. I wonder what the, what the cancer was. No. Come on. Mm, she's gone now. Isn't she? No, you're fine. Oh, all right. Kim, what kind of cancer was it? Hand cancer. It was acute lymphomic leukemia. Lymphocytic leukemia. Yeah, lymphocytic. Wow, at 16. That's old for that. Yeah. Wow. So, so been, how's I've that doing? I had it for two months. Are you all right now? So you had the whole brain radiation and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah, it was like um, August 30th of this year was like one year off treatment for me. You doing okay? I am. It's a curable cancer. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Goodness. All right, Kim. Yeah. Thanks. Take All care right. of yourself. Good job. All right. Thanks. Good times. She probably, was, she probably was at risk for. She may have had some bone density problems. Rest that the, pelvis too. Yeah. The cancer treatment. Yeah. Yeah. She was a little weakened, and yeah. then uh, yeah, she took the spill off the uh, zip line. And zip line is one of those things that seems like the world's greatest idea, but it, yeah. there's two things that can happen. Either you can let go when it's at the top, or you could not let go and just go blasting into whatever it's tied to. Yeah. I don't you got to have yeah. it hanging over a lake or something. I don't, well, I'm Who the hell a gets line. a zip line? Where do you get them? <clears throat> she you just take a take a piece of rope, yeah, thread a pulley it through it. Yeah. Then put doing, a piece uh, of rope through the pulley and hang on to the pulley and just. What are you doing go. Saturday? Let's hook up a zip line. Thinking maybe. about doing that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, she didn't hook it up. You know that was a guy's work. Yes. Yeah. Felicia. Hi. You're 15. Yeah. Hey, I'm the other loser on the phone, Anthony. All right, Anthony. Yeah. What's up? Uh, nothing much. Yeah, I just wanted to know what the song Wondering was really about. <laughs> Wait, I'm really confused. The two voices just came up. Yeah, just so to answer the question. Don't, the other two animals say just beat it, too. Okay, uh, it's about it's about my dog. Really? Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. I Cash love dogs. Dog. How is yes. it about your dog? Well, figure it out. Read the lyrics, buddy. Beat it. Uh, beat yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> no, really. No, uh, that's hardcore. That's hardcore. <laughs> punk now. No, that guy yeah. was on. This guy's on hold for 102 minutes, and you told him to beat it. That's hardcore. And don't apologize, and don't don't backpedal. Don't go. No, no, no. Seriously, that's cool. But that's not hardcore. <laughs> you don't care. Let me tell you what hardcore is. You don't spit on the audience and then go wipe it off their face. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You spit on them. Julia, 35. Yes. What's hey, Julie. Up? Um, I just had some questions. My daughter, like, uh, stays up all night in her room. Like, it, I, I thought for two nights. And then it's like the, the next day, or she just wants to sleep all the time mm -hmm. <clears throat> and won't go to school. Oh, boy. And uh, it's just, like, grouchy. Really. How, how old is she? She's 14. Yeah. What, do you, what do you mean won't go to school? She won't wake up to go to school. Don't you want to get that evaluated? Um, yeah, I do. Where's dad? Dad must not be around. Oh, dad is basically, he's on drugs himself. Okay, mm -hmm. so she has a history of addiction in her yeah. family. So there's about a 50% probability that that's what we're dealing with, well, just, just with that yeah. history. Also, she could just be really angry about dad and but depressed. And the, absolutely, that. but there's a 50-50 chance that she's got that gene going. And when anybody with that genetic history, if, if in fact she has it, uh, starts behaving strangely. You got to think. Yeah. Well, there's for a fifty-fifty chance of her having genes that gene, but only a twenty-five percent chance of her actually being into dope out yeah. of the fifty percent. See what I'm saying, Julie? Yeah, <laughs> I, I totally understand. Yeah. I was just—I didn't know if I should take her somewhere or. Yeah, well, where, yes, yes, where, absolutely. Where's drug addict daddy? Um, out and about. Well, they're not. I, not, I would just tell her you need to get out more. Not living at home. Yeah, she, she's here now. No. Listen, she's I'm, 14. I'm trying to figure out would drug addict dad. Yes, I will, but would you listen to me for a second? Uh-huh. You're the husband, her dad? Yeah. He's out and about. Yeah, he he's not at the home anymore. He's just out running wherever he's at. But you still married to him? No. So he's... Oh, okay, so is he's he, gone. Is Were you he ever out of the, out of, Hold on, let me talk there. Is he out of the state? Um, I have no idea. 
Mm. Okay, but don't, don't give me that. The out and about answer sounds like he ran down to the corner to grab a six-pack. Kind of true, thing. true, true. All right, Julie. So you, no contact with him whatsoever? No. Okay. What's your daughter's name? Jackie. All right, put Jackie on. Wake her up and put her on the phone. Hold on. It's nighttime. She's up. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jackie? Hello? Hold on. Speaking of Jackie, it reminds me. i got to take care of business when I get home. <laughs> Julie? I mean, Jackie? This is Jackie. Yeah. So you're 14? Yeah, I'm 14. You're a little depressed, are you? Um, I guess. Yeah. Angry? Angry? What's happening that you're not Confused. going to school? Um... Uh, I'm going to school. Well, that you don't get out of bed on some sometimes when your mom tries to wake you up. Yeah. How come? Yeah. What's up? Um, uh, no, I don't know. You're freaked out now. I know because you're on the radio and stuff. You doing any drugs? No, I don't do drugs. Yeah, sure. Your mom's standing no. right there holding a rolling pin. <laughs> of course, yeah, I wouldn't do no. drugs either if my Julie was there holding a rolling pin. But listen, Jackie. Here's what I want to say overall. Uh-huh. Because we're, we're not going to get to the bottom of what you're doing and all this kind right. of stuff with Mama hanging hanging by the radio. Here's the deal. Uh-huh. You, you're probably a little angry at your father. Yeah, actually. And, yeah. and, yeah, and you, should, you should be angry at your father because he abandoned the family. And that doesn't mean... That doesn't mean you're a bad person. I know that's the way he feels in a way, like, oh, you, you could have done something. It means he's a bad guy. Right. It's all to do with him. Yeah. Nothing to do Zero with to him. Do. You know, it, it, it's like a war. It's like an American guy kills a Japanese guy in World War II. Nothing personal. Yep. Just firing a gun, that's his job. It's not, not that he hated his family or anything. This is it. Your dad's a bad guy. He's gone. Now... Don't punish your mom for your dad being a bad guy. Don't punish guy. yourself. And don't punish yeah. yourself, but especially your mom. Your mom, I know you're getting a lot, you got a lot of anger, you got a lot of feelings, you guys argue a lot. Your mom loves you. She's trying to do what's best for you. You're on yeah. the same side. Trying to take care of you. She you hung in. Together. She's the parent that stuck by you. Yeah, I Your know. dad took off. He took the easy route. Your mom, she stood by you. She's done the best she could with you. She's calling our show because she's concerned about you. Please understand that your mom loves you and she's trying to do some good for you. Yeah. And and please help her help you. But don't don't, don't, don't screw thank you. Wait, bye, bye, bye. That's good enough. Mm, take That's a little like Vicodin kind of tonight. Take some codeine. Smoke true, a little heroin. True, true. <laughs> please, no. <laughs> but uh, Jackie, don't screw up now. Listen, don't miss school. Don't get so depressed that you put yourself into a hole that you can't get out of. This, this, you're sort of on the launching pad I of life the whole right thing now. Through. I yeah, but she's setting up a trajectory. But my point is, go the next step. Don't just crap on yourself and your mom. Go ahead and take care of yourself. If you are depressed, get treatment, get looked at, get things taken care of so you can get on that launching pad and have a nice liftoff. Yeah. What's with dads? They they're, suck. They're, they're, they're horrible. Bad, yeah, don't yeah. be scared to go talk to someone. You know? I, the old, here's the part that, that really angers me about the dads is they never really get punished. Mm-mm. And... Instead of having kids that hate their guts and resent them their whole life, yeah. all they have is these daughters who long idealize, to, them. idealize them and long for them. And they, they become these horrible teenagers, and they sit there and scream at their poor moms who are like, we've been working two jobs and trying to take I care of them. I was there, I did it. And they you, just, so your dad took off? Yeah, my dad, our dad took off when we were about 14. What? Just vanished. Finally, he finally took left off. fully when we were 16. I guess, yeah, like late 15, early 16, like he took off for, for good. Totally didn't know where I went. Still don't know to this day. Haven't seen him, wow. talked to him. And, uh, I mean, he's given me about 75% of my song matter, subject matter to write about songs. And so that's a good thing. But other than that, it was pretty much all bad that came with it. And it took me, I was hard on my mom. You know, yeah, she's we the same situation as, as, as Jackie and Julie. Do you, do you, would you crap on her because you felt she was somehow, should have protected you from that? No. Love? I don't even think about I was just it. Pissed. We were just pissed I just hated everyone. World. Yeah. I hated every kid that had a dad, every kid that, you know, I, mean, I was just pissed at everyone. So yeah. your your dad's dad, you guys' dad, just split Christmas, Christmas Eve. Yeah. Christmas Eve, 16. Got in a fight with my mom finally the last time. In 16, 16 years old. You guys were 16. Yeah, I guess we were, yeah, f- 16. Yeah, 16. All right, and this guy had been around from 0 to 16. Yeah, well, well, at fourteen, when, at 14 he, he left started. twice. Our mom, she's our mom. She like she's got lupus. Oh, really? So that w- that was all he started. I guess that was a big frustration for him. So when things got really bad, when she'd go in the hospital and stuff, he so he'd take he off. eventually bailed. Yeah. And if not, yeah, no I contact since. Not at all. He's not made an effort. You know what? To when, 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 when finally it took like by the time when when he left finally when we were sixteen, it took by the time we, when I was twenty twenty. For the courts to finally give my mom a divorce, right? 
So I was like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be a man and go to court with my mom and try to like support her. Mm-hmm. And I saw him then, and he was like, as far as like right here, and he walked by and didn't say anything. Oh my god! Yeah, that's, that's it. Man, see, guy, yeah, so. you know, guys don't. But do I that. think he People, also guys do not grow I think up. Hey, you guys. I think he felt like a like a because we got when when he left we got evicted from our house and our whole family just fell apart. Prick. So. But don't whatever you guys do, do not grow up to be that. Oh you know no, what I mean? do no. not be that to women. My, like my yeah. whole goal in life, I mean, I really love what I'm doing. I love you know punk rock. I love rock and roll. I love being in band touring. But my whole goal in life is to have kids and and, and not sell records. Remember that? Yeah. 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 Oh, don't buy a record. Don't, don't buy a record. Don't do it. Wow. Because well, you got to be freed up to go raise a family. I could not. Imagine uh, raising you two beautiful, four. beautiful we had children. Four, ki- four kids. My <laughs> <laughs> brothers. Bouncing baby and, boys. And How are they doing? The, the uh, brothers. They, um, we all have our own share of like, you know. They're great though. They're, like, they're great, great people. You know, they've turned into really great people. Older I mean, if you met older my brother, younger sister. If you met my brother and my sister, everyone says this to me. That he is the best guy. She's the best girl I've ever met. You know, like really the, nice. they're the yeah. ni- they're the well, they best can be, people. They can be great people and still. Well, have. We've all got our problems, you know. Right. We're right. we're lucky enough to have. I'd suggest therapy for them, and they they don't listen to me. But you know, I have therapy in my own songwriting. It's very like. A big I suggest therapy for myself. Yeah. I just don't, I'm not willing to pay for, for binge it. too. He needs I'm to go. Just kidding. <laughs> Drew, uh, I suggested therapy for Drew. He said, "All right," and then he suggested it for me. And I said, "Fine," and we pay for each other's therapy. See, yeah. my problem is I want to go to the the lady on the Sopranos, but she's not available for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, take ourselves a little break. Good Charlotte, our guest tonight. See, that's what I love about this show. Yeah. You're heading down one path and Boom. then uh, pow, pow. Heading down another. Let's uh, take ourselves a quick break and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. And uh, this is the best of Love Line. The best of the best of the best. As Engineer Anderson <laughs> says, it's the best from the last three or four years. No, just wow. the, the last year for this week. Next oh, week last is year last, for this yeah. week. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, it gets confusing, but the yes. point is... It's is great. It's, it's enough show. Yes. It's at least 100% more show than we normally do. Right. Right? Well, as, as witnessed by this upcoming guest. That's right. Mr. Marilyn Manson. Hey everybody, it's Loveline, Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified as not. Marilyn Manson in studio tonight. Hello. Surprise to him. Surprise to uh, me and us, but not to Drew. No, surprise, surprise to, to me. me. Yeah, Drew, a surprise to everyone. Surprise to me. All right. Well, uh, producer Ann doing her job. Tried to call me, but uh, couldn't get hold of me. Shocking. I, I like shocking. it. I, I know. I, Given I, the fact that you never turn your ringer off. You always check your voicemail. Yeah, it's pretty have it. He's like rock and roll. Yeah, I just I, here's the here's the whole thing. Too cool for school. I just I'm I, more responsible than you. Well, here's <laughs> it's scary, but probably true. But if you think about it, um, when the phone rings, there's a you know 10 percent chance it's going to be something you want to hear, 80 percent chance it's going to be something you really don't care about, and then the, then the 10 percent where it's going to be some tragedy or something like you know grandma passed. It's the middle of the night kind of thing. But really, if you think about it, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Like, Don't what? you have caller ID? Be what there, if, be there yeah, for your family. Yeah, ev- but ev- everyone's got the private thing Be there to thing support on. your family. Well, you got to get that <laughs> thing where you have to uh, unblock it. Yeah. That's the way to go. I like that. I should do that. Drew, do you have that? Um, yeah. You know what I, uh, you know, two things I want to talk about. And you can before, make uh, yours say something that's not exactly you. Mine says something very... Oh, really? Drew would enjoy it. <laughs> I don't... Uh, should I say it? Will that somehow identify me? No. I don't know, but no. I'll have to change it. I'll tell you later. All right. Yeah. It's a psychiatrist that did a lot of drugs. Oh, really? You, you mean Timothy this, Leary? No. The <laughs> penis guy. Kinsey? There's lots of those guys. Freud. Oh, Freud. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, we, Thanks. You know, now i got to change my number. <laughs> you know what we did? See, we, we went too deep. Yes, yes. Uh, you well, went uh, deep we like that kid ourselves. with the girl. Yeah, we're, we're too, yeah, yeah. We should just went kept it obvious. kept it easy yeah. and obvious. But um, let me uh, let me just say this: uh, it was uh, hey, when's the last time we saw a potato bug? Remember those those huge? Uh, they're like beetles. They got those big round heads and those pinchers, mandibles in front of them. Not, they're they're not massive. Not any time recently. Yeah. I had a dream about one of those last night. You did? 
You had a dream about a potato bug yeah, last night? A potato bug meets was tarantula. Was that a wet dream? That was, no, really? Just, it was lying dead on the floor somewhere, and I had to clean it up. I thought, how am I going to clean this thing up? Potato it's bugs have the, have, have the they're heads that are they're round like grapes, you they're, know? They they're the almost big, like a dog. They're, they're, they're so small. They're like Paris Hilton's teeth. dog. Two huge teeth. They're mandibles. They're called Jerusalem crickets. I've yeah, they're yes. called Jerusalem. <laughs> I would call them uh, potato bugs. Out here, yeah. I hadn't seen one since my childhood. I found one today. And they're so big that they actually make noise when they walk. Yeah. And, and and I didn't, you know, you can't crush a potato bug. That's what that was my dream was about. You got to blow it up or something. Like you have to, you have to, you have to you harpoon can't carry, it. You can't pick them up. They're too huge. You set them yeah. on fire. I, I should have. I, I what, what I ended up doing is like potato bug, goddamn. <laughs> or put or put uh, <laughs> or put uh, salt on them. I, will that work? Putting salt on them. I don't know, but my keyboard player told me that if you're ever worried about someone when you're having sex he used to do this in college he'd squirt a lemon on a girl when he was going down see, below see, and if she screamed right open wound meant open source close for business that's right that's checks right. in the mail yeah yeah is that a good what do you do yeah do you no. like that a little no. little lemon on the calamari you know i, what I was I'm just saying? thinking the, the oyster yeah nothing wrong not with not that. not for not for flavor but, for well, but it's incidentally, yeah. That, you know. yeah. But you know, unfortunately, <laughs> I think the, 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 it's, it's a mucosal, and I think it's like squirting a lemon yes. in your eye. You're, you you're need a mucosa. cut in your eye. Yes. You'd, you'd still scream. I know that I, I poured Jack Daniels down my chest once, and when it hit the, downstairs, it didn't feel good. So oh, you yeah. can try that too. No, the, the sack is a sponge. I got gasoline on my sack once. Burnt me. Burnt my eggs real good. But the point <laughs> is, is a new song. The sack is a sponge. I wanted Burnt my to, eggs. Is good. No, I wanted no. to. Uh, I was trying to get rid of this potato bug, and all I could do is sort of try to get it to uh, go up on this little piece of wood. And then I was going to fling it sort of out of the room, but yeah. I ended up shooting it like a hockey puck, you know. And I sure. kept just kept it just sliding, bang, and something. And I start feel bad for it, but I, you can't crush it. I didn't know what to do with Put it. Put it in but the freezer. I couldn't get it. I couldn't get. What'd, I couldn't, what'd you end up doing? I, I ended up getting it and flinging it uh, into the neighbor's yard. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yes, but I just thought I haven't, you know, but that, that's. God, that's the biggest insect there is, and not just size-wise, but just volume. Like yeah. water displacement test, potato bug, about the size of a raccoon. Yeah. Just crazy. It's like the size of, uh, when you're 14, your penis. Yeah. Oh, hey, oh, oh. Yeah, for me. Yeah. Or other yeah. people. That's erect. Not that's erect. Right, right. But <laughs> the, round, the big round head with the eyes. Yeah. Big eyes there yeah. and the mandible there. All right, Drew. Oof. Drew had a dream about a potato bug. And saw a raccoon at Magic Mountain. Huh? So what's going all on right, here? Drew, it's all coming together. So me living it's, inside your head. It's all coming together. Marilyn uh, had, had a wet dream. Time at Magic Mountain. Drew went to Magic Mountain on Kids. Friday. Had oh, a fantastic, fantastic time. time. Did a little free fall, did you? I did. Good times. Like, I'm too scared to, to do that one. I can't take it. Oh, but now they've got rides. They're just crazy. I went oh, yeah. to uh, Japanese Disneyland, and all of the songs were in Japanese. It was very it's disturbing. Like Small World and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. In Japanese. Oh, yeah, and they had that ride where the guy got on top of the chick and spun around while he the, was in her. The country the helicopter. bears, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did the helicopter on it. Yeah, very kind. The line for that one was really. Long. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Elizabeth. Hi. You're 26. Yeah. You have uh, vaginal itching. Unfortunately. Yeah, Marilyn's bass player would squeeze a lemon on. It's not. The, I'm not. The I don't fan. have herpes. Don't need to worry about that. All right, let's go. What, what's the deal here, Elizabeth? Um, well, I am back in March. I found out that I had HPV. Right. Warts. So warts. Warts. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went to the guy. Know everything. They did a coloscopy on me, and then they did mm -hmm. thyro on me. Cryo. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then ever since then, I've had this bad vaginal itching. Um, I went to the back to the doctor. She thought it was a bacterial infection. I was okay. on antibiotics. That didn't work. So I went back again. And she gave me another prescription, and then that's, I had the same problem. And now I don't have insurance, so I'm mm -hmm. waiting till I can go back to see her. Are you on any hormone, birth control pill, anything like that? I'm not, no. Do you wear jeans? I do. Have you tried anti-yeast medicine? Yep. Mm -hmm. I've tried so almost tried everything. I have bought the Vagisil anti-itch cream. That helps yeah. sometimes, but... Not all the time. Are you continuing to be sexually active with your boyfriend? No. Mm -mm. I okay. actually, the guy that gave it to me, um, I haven't seen him for two years. So, so you're not having sex with anybody? Mm -mm. Nope. And you're, nothing's... Your jeans. Yeah, your vagina's not getting exposed to any latex or anything? 
Mm-mm. Anyway, okay. Nope. Okay. So we've tried the bac- antibacterial. What kind of underwear? Um. Just see. out of my own curiosity. Let's, let's <laughs> All that's heading for yeast. Um, though. She's tried the yeast. Victoria's Secret undies, you know. So. Really? That might be the so. secret. Hey, oh. Yeah, let me let me say this. Uh, by the way, I don't know why it reminded me, but you know, once a year, somebody uh, models a uh, ten million dollar Victoria's Secret also, bra. Also, question. Yeah. I'm sorry. Don't sure, go ahead. Shaven, unshaven. Mm. Shaven. Important. Shaven. Shaven. There you go, Drew. Look that up in the literature. Yeah, I get a little itch when I shave, Drew. Do you well, shave I don't down know there, what Marilyn? It could be. Well, but I'm, I'm looking. I've just pulled out an article uh, that they published in the New England Journal a couple months ago. <laughs> About chronic vulvovaginal candida. It's, it's a chronic yeast infection. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And this um, article talked about how frequent that is. For some women, it takes quite a bit more to clear it up than just the usual yeast creams. Uh-huh. And they're actually right. recommending a medicine called fluconazole. Yeah. Or diflucan. And that's something you got you got to get from a doctor or a clinic. I also have them at the uh, coin-op car wash, I think, too. You just can, hit the button. Like, can Planned Parenthood help me? Or I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Planned Parenthood. And, and you can make let, make sure you document exactly what you've had done, what you've tried. But it, it weekly diflucan has been associated with a uh, tr- uh, cure for this kind of thing, if it is, re- in fact, due to Canada. Yeah, right. That's Canada. Yeah. Canada? That's what they call it. Canada, right? Yep. All right. That's yeast, right? Right. All right. So the whole country of Canada. <clears throat> oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. Canada. Where, where does that come from? Yeast? No, Canada. The name? Yeah. Oh, boy. It probably All right. Candid. Right. It's got the word candid in it. It means don't tell. Chelsea? Yeah, hey. You're 16? Yeah. You have a corset question for Marilyn Manson? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, how can I help? Okay. I was wondering, like, okay, first... I want to, like, congratulate you on your engagement. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think you're awesome. And I have thank a big fat page oh, of you much. in my room. And it's oh, huge. Thanks. And I love you. <laughs> thank you. And uh, You wear a corset? Yeah. Sometimes. It hurts, huh? <laughs> Not really. It, I feel well, that's good. good. Oh, it does. Yeah. And, I can uh, imagine maybe it'd feel like wearing a back, like, you know, the guys who work at the lumber yard sure. have that lower back brace. Right, with right, the right. Thing. Maybe it's yeah. that. Well, yeah. When Dita wears it, she gets it down to 16 inches her waist. Yeah, I know. Wow. I met this guy, Mr. Pearl, who makes corsets. He's very famous. His waist is 12 inches, but oh he can't God. take the corset off because your body shapes to it. Um, yeah. Well, That's really is serious. He, is, he he sleep? is he sleeping it? It's uncomfortable to take it off because his organs Yeah, it hurts your too. back like a... Oh, it so hurts if you take lot. it off like your, your liver will come out, your urethra or something? I don't know, but that's extreme corset, yeah. corsetry. Okay. Yeesh. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you were going to ask? Uh, I wanted to know, like, which ones work the best. Dita's? You, you know, I'm not the expert uh, as much as she is, but I think you. Uh, it's a matter of finding one that's made properly. The so ones that are made... different kinds? Yeah, not the ones that are, like, sure. produced. Yeah, no, you know, and it doesn't have to be expensive, but the ones that are made by someone who knows what they're doing because it has to be a corset maker that makes them. Well, yeah. do you and the, the boning that's in them is, is very important that it's correct yeah, so that you like can move in it. It's not, you do, know... It do you get them damage. online or something? You could find uh, antique ones on eBay, but there's a lot of different places. Um, I think if you wrote to Dita or at Dita.net, she would be the best to ask because I, I always... I've worn medical ones, and I wear them improperly, kind of down around the hip. What, what, what do the medical ones do? I wore it because keep I like the way it looked, but it's good for your back. Yeah. yeah, it's actually to hold a dental hernia and things in? like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I but, found are they it called good corsets? For, yeah. I, I thought they were called like a truss. The truss down, down lower, but the corsets for real. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't mind sporting one of those. Uh, should get me one of those. Which one? A yeah. lot of guys wear them underneath their business suits, probably. With yeah. those lingerie. A girdle. I uh, also like those <laughs> neck rings, too, that those uh, tribes wear in the uh, Amazon Ooh, jungle. To make their necks long? Yeah, the women yeah. Get, get that real long neck going. Mm-hmm. Get that going. I don't like the long neck thing. Well, get that with the corset. You got, you got a woman there. <laughs> you got a woman. All right, let's take a uh, little bit of a break. Marilyn Manson uh, in studio tonight. New CD is uh, out. It's uh, best of. We'll uh, hear something else off of that and uh, talk to him after this. Hey, 
everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Marilyn Manson joining us in studio tonight. Yeah. Always good to see Marilyn. Got a uh, new CD out. It's a uh, best of. It's called uh, Lest We or Ye Forget. Yet. Lest We Forget. Oh, yeah. Which is, uh, which is a... a uh, Kind of a war memorial, uh, you know, lest we forget or we repeat the past. So, right. Kind of uh, my musical document of the war that I've struggled uh, through the 10 years to get from. Well, you know, it's where I am. It's been 10 years, right? Bush one to Bush two, yeah. Well, I'm talking about you personally. Like, uh, I mean, you hit and all the controversy began. I started the band ago? in 1989. And but but be, became prominent and uh, national notoriety. What year? Ninety four. In 95? my head or in no? In, in, in reality, <laughs> in engineer crisis. Uh, I think you know, sweet dreams was uh, right. best clip on MTV, and then beautiful people. But the real problem well, started what, are we talking around anti Christ superstar when there was a lot of Christian groups creating. A, a tremendous amount of false rumors that really put my life in danger. So I became oh. completely uh, nihilistic and went, f you know, I figured if I'm going to get shot, I'm at least going to enjoy yeah. it. it, it it's, kinda, it's interesting. You, you never, uh, I mean, you know, I'm maybe I'm being naive, but Drew, if he's honest, will probably agree with me, which is I never really thought about the danger part of what you were doing. I mean, I always just assumed, oh, these, these fundamental wackos are pissed off, or, oh, look at Marilyn, she's selling tickets. We, we literally, the besides the protesting part, which is right. not as hard, we, there was so many death threats, at least 100 every show. We would have maybe 35 police with bomb dogs every night of... You forget, really? you were in Oregon State when I got attacked by a guy from outside of a, you know, team down a stadium to rush the stage. Really? You, you weren't, you weren't he there. He didn't get you? No, sorry. Son of a bitch. But it's a straight... This tour is... <laughs> well, I can get my money back for that guy. <laughs> this tour is kind of uh, bringing back a lot of those memories because we're playing some of these songs we haven't in a while. But I'm actually going to be in Denver on election night. And last time I was there... Columbine. ...was when I did the interview for Bowling for Columbine. Well, uh, like I got a couple of thoughts. So one is, uh, yeah, I forgot about the part where you, you know, you uh, Larry Flint's in a wheelchair because uh, people didn't like what he did, you know, and he was supposed to be in the ground. He just, he's Missed lucky, yeah. and he's in a wheelchair. So I never really Absolutely, thought about yeah. that aspect of uh, what you do. The other part is, is uh, as I was talking to someone in a in a smaller way, but some of the same. Uh, S some of the same uh, details, which is uh, like when we did the man show, we get a lot of complaints, and then eventually you just become the man show, and or you become Howard Stern, or you become Marilyn Manson, which is n then they expect it out of you, and you right. get to do it. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, because now you're Marilyn Manson, and that's what you do, and uh, Howard Stern does what he does in a smaller way when we did the man show. Oh, that's it. And Loveline, that's what you do, too. Like, oh... You know, at the beginning, it's always what gives you the right, and who the hell do you think you are, and what do you know, and we're going to do this, and now you just become that. Mm -hmm. So, have, have, do you feel... Well, I, I knew that when that. I did it, and that's what I wanted. That's, uh, that's what I still want, you But know? do you get as... You don't get nearly as much crap now as you did 10 years ago, do you? Because uh, you're Marilyn it, it's Manson different. now. It comes and goes in different ways, and this tour is called Against All Gods, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's now being me seems... Uh, less evil in some ways considering war being raged over religion and things like that i would argue though that it's it's you are accepted the same way howard stern is accepted now and you're you become you're, part of the landscape you're becoming the, fa yeah. the fabric of uh, well, the culture the, the two, you're supposed to do the right. two yeah. words marilyn and manson were my way of summing up american culture now that i'm part of it you know i think people don't understand me more necessarily but they see me in some ways, especially after Bowling for Columbine, as an artist and not just uh, 
an undescribable entity that's causing problems. They right. see me as a... And, and he's made, you know, he made the... It's not, he's not like a uh, flash in the pan, like a sister soldier or someone like that. You know what I mean? He's, right. uh, he's, he's stood, staying power. stood the test of time. People, yeah. have, people have been saying for 10 years, aren't you worried that your image is overshadowing the music? And I'm always say, I'm worried that the music's overshadowing my image. Uh, <laughs> well, you're, I mean... It's, it's all I want because what I do is not just one thing. It's how people react to it. It's... This interview, it's the way I look. Is it? Is it's there a, a performance a, art uh, element of it? Do you ever look at it that way? Yeah, I, I look at it like uh, like Salvador Dali. It was like his yeah. best creation was being Salvador Dali. Right, right. right. I like it. It's uh, you know, it's it's like being a kid, right? Living a fantasy, not not being ashamed or afraid to do it. Right. All right. Well, good times. And, and you I, do that in your own way too. Yeah. Oh, oh he does. Yeah. <laughs> Masturbates and naps. It's like being a kid again. And I get freaked out by potato bugs. <laughs> yeah. We're going to run around. I'm very excited about you the really, pictures we just looked at. Yeah, like, we just whoa! looked at You really get conditioned pictures. to think that that's wrong. You what? know, that, to daydream, to you know, fantasize, to do those things. Yeah. Hey, I, uh, look, I, you know, I just, I never really thought about the aspect of going out on stage and thinking that some uh, religious fundamentalist wacko, the same guys that are shooting abortion clinic doctors, might put the crosshairs on your forehead. Oh, yeah. Well, I know that every day I step out of my house that that, that could happen. But I, but now, not is, is, is it as acute as it was eight years ago? I mean, there must have been a time it when it was bad. really a much more serious threat. Antichrist Superstar, I think, was a little bit more to the point for them, so it inflamed them immediately. Right. I think, you know, a lot of different reasons for choosing personal Jesus, but I'm sure they're not real thrilled about that either. Right. And is it is it one group in particular, or is it just that whole population? I think I've managed to piss off every <laughs> type of people in different ways, but that's the point. If, right. If everyone loves you, it's, you're not making anything that's powerful. To me... You hear that, Drew? It has to be hate and love, all of it. It's not extreme. Yeah. All right. Hey, look, it's the same with... The, if everyone hates you, you're... Yeah, it's bad, yeah, too. But just, it's, just, <laughs> it's the same with women, though. You, you, the worst you could have is someone who's just sort of indifferent. Like, when you like some chick, best uh, she either hates you or is head over heels for you. What you don't want is that, huh, who? Oh, I don't know. I never thought about it. That's the worst. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes? The yes. need to exist is man's fundamental drive. All right. Don't get heavy. Exist it's to other people. Hold up, Nietzsche. we got to take a break. <laughs> Marilyn Manson in uh, studio tonight. We'll, uh... Now, Marilyn was just... You're going to hang for uh, an abbreviated period of time. You but you'll hang for one more uh, break, won't you? Yeah, or, sure. Or longer. I didn't know. I, I, I have an appointment with uh, Dr. Hunter S. Thompson later, so I have to... Oh, really? Yeah. So we'll keep back from that. Tonight? <laughs> yeah. You meet, meeting Hunter S. Thompson tonight? I might if I get uh, get done here in time. Oh, okay. Before right. 7 a.m. All right. All right. Uh, we'll uh, take ourselves a uh, quick break. We'll be right back after this. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed in this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or the station. Sponsors. Or the, 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 the producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.